What's going on everybody? So in this video I'm going to tell you every Easter egg that was in that Elseworld Part 2 episode from last night. And man were there a whole bunch of Easter eggs so let's not even waste any time and let's just jump right into it. One of the first things in the episode was the conversation between Barry Allen and Oliver Queen talking about the Batman and how Oliver was talking about how he's just a myth, he's an urban legend and that he, Oliver Queen, is the first vigilante. If you guys don't know anything about Batman, it is a huge thing for him to be an urban legend or to not even exist. For the longest time, people didn't think that there was a Batman. They thought it was just a creature coming down and picking people up and beating up villains and stuff like that. They never thought it was a man, and so a lot of people didn't think he existed. If you read a lot of Batman stories, or just even some of the cartoons talk about how People don't believe that there is like a Batman. They think it's a creature taking people and fighting for Gotham. So it was kind of cool for this show to have the urban myth, like just persona of the character. But also Oliver Queen says he is the original vigilante. Now, of course, that is reference into the show because Arrow was the first show that was made on the CW, although they're not counting Smallville, which is currently now in the multiverse. So yeah, again, in our eyes, Oliver Queen's still not the original Vigilante because there was a Green Arrow on Smallville. But to also prove that Oliver Queen is not the original Vigilante, Green Arrow was created in 1941, whereas Batman was created in 1939. So Oliver Queen, not the original Vigilante. Now these next two Easter eggs are pretty obvious, with one being the Bat Signal and the other being Wayne Enterprises. Both of these are connected to the Batman and Bruce Wayne. Wayne Enterprises is usually a place where Batman has a lot of hidden rooms and he has like extra equipment and stuff like that and of course it's where he does his business by day as Bruce Wayne and then he'll use it by night as Batman. Next up is Vasper Fairchild and this was the woman that Oliver kept talking about throughout the episode that we eventually found out that he slept with and now she hates him. Vasper Fairchild is a radio talk show host like they said in the show but she was also a love interest of Bruce Wayne and a pretty serious one at that. But if you've ever read the Batman story Bruce Wayne Fugitive you know that Vasper Fairchild was murdered and Bruce Wayne was framed for that murder. Side note very underrated storyline if you ever get to read it check it out I thought it was awesome. The next thing on the list is Kate Kane. Now a lot of people might not assume this is an Easter because they're just like that's just Batwoman but did you know that freaking Kate Kane is the second version of Batwoman which can be a little confusing because Batwoman has always been Catherine Kane but there have been two different versions one was known as Kathy Kane and of course there's this version known as Kate Kane the difference between them is Kathy Kane which was the original Batwoman was an actual love interest of Batman and a lot of people believe and it has been said that she was only created to kind of get people away from the idea that Batman and Robin were gay. Years later Batwoman was recreated to be Kate Kane, the cousin of Bruce Wayne and she was also a lesbian. So the character did go through a big transformation but it's always been just kind of the same character. They just kind of changed her origin and her personality and stuff. Before we got to meet Kate Kane, we also heard that Oliver Queen said that Bruce Wayne aka Batman has been missing for three years. Now this could be a reference to a whole bunch of things. We know that in movies like Batman Begins or Batman the Dark Knight Rises that Bruce Wayne disappears for a while and so does the Batman. So it could be references there but from comic book standpoint there is only one time that I I remember there's so much Batman material out there, but there's only one story where Bruce Wayne and the Batman totally disappeared and was not in Gotham at all, and that was the storyline after Final Crisis when Batman goes to try to kill Darkseid, maybe not kill, but definitely defeat Darkseid, and in the process gets sent back in time. And this is when we got the storyline Batman The Return of Bruce Wayne where he basically fought his way through time to get back to present day. It's a batshit crazy story but it's also awesome. You should definitely read it and that's also the time when Dick Grayson became Batman. That was the whole era of when Batman became not Bruce Wayne. I don't know where I was going with that but yeah. That was something really interesting there. Batman being gone for three years could be that he's totally back in time going through a whole bunch of stuff. Perfect time to bring him in on Legends or something like that. I don't know, just saying. Next up, some people might have glossed over this one, but when Batwoman says, have you used Retina Scan? And the guys were like, of course we've done that. They're like, I could have one of Bruce's old R&D guys look at this. He works in the building. You might have not caught on that that could be Lucius Fox who does work at Wayne Enterprises and was part of the R&D department and also makes 
all of Batman's gadgets. So if we do get that Batwoman show, it is very possible that we'll get Lucius Fox as her guy that is creating all the weapons for Batwoman. The next one I feel like everybody caught on to, and of course the Wi-Fi password being Alfred, just means it's a reference to Alfred Pennyworth, the faithful butler of Bruce Wayne. Next thing on the list is the statue that Kara picked up in Bruce Wayne's office. If it looked familiar to you, it's probably because you noticed it from Batman 66, the old Adam West TV show. That was the thing, the statue I should say, that they used to get into the Batcave. Speaking of the Batcave, we got a sneak peek of it when Ruby Rose, aka Batwoman, went down to get her suit and we saw the suit for the first time, like hanging on there looking all awesome. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, Bruce Wayne, Wayne Manor, Wayne Tower, anything that has the name Wayne on it always has hidden compartments or hidden storerooms or anything that he can get equipment or has extra suits in. Also, again, Lucius Fox works at Wayne Enterprises, would definitely have a place for Batman to get all of his stuff. Also, if you ever played the Telltale version season two of Batman, you saw the hidden room that they used to make all the Batman equipment there as well. It went straight from his office to where all the bat suit and everything was. So I thought that was kind of cool. Moving on to where we get the most Easter eggs of the episode, and that is Arkham Asylum. Obviously, everybody knows Arkham Asylum. We see them outside the sign, Arkham Asylum. But it's when we get inside to Arkham that they just start dropping Easter eggs like crazy. Some of the biggest ones happen when Oliver and John are walking through the hallways, and we see the names on the doors of who is in these cells. One being Oswald Cobblepot, the next being Isley P, which is Pamela Isley, aka Poison Ivy. Then we got Carlo B, which is Basil Carlo, aka Clayface. Then we get this nice little riddle of what is blue and gray and red all over before we see the name Edward Nigma, or I should say Enigma E. Then we get Guggenheim M, which might have confused a lot of people because you're like, oh man, what Batman character is that? Well, it's actually the former executive producer producer or I should say showrunner for the Arrowverse. So they were kind of just throwing some homage out there like hey man paying their respects to their former showrunner. And I thought that was kind of cool although I was like man what character is that? But then I remembered it was a showrunner. So yeah that's pretty crazy but there's still so much more. Once all of the Arkham inmates break out you see that one guy get a full frame of like finally the people have taken over blah blah and he puts on a mask. If you do not know what that mask is from, that is the Psycho Pirate. If you don't know anything about Psycho Pirate, that mask gives him the power to control people's emotions and he can make people feel however he wants. He's like extremely powerful and he's actually part of Tom King's run going on right now in the current Batman storyline. Really awesome, really crazy character, so it's pretty cool to see him in this actual episode. In this actual episode. Sorry, I can't talk. I'm just so excited. Now this next part has so many things that it's very possible that I missed something. So if I do miss something, let me know in the comment section down below. But let's start off with the weapons on the floor. Obviously the very top one, we've seen this in the Arrowverse before and he has had run-ins with Batman but that is Captain Boomerang's boomerang. Then the thing under it, I don't know what that is. Like it's just, I can't get a very good clear image of it. But my thinking is that could be one of Joker's buzzers that he always wears on his hands when he shakes somebody, it shocks them really bad. I think that might be one of the buzzers that he uses. Next up we have these what are obviously grenades and I couldn't really tell because they looked very odd but I believe they are penguin grenades. They look like little penguins and of course you would you know take off their heads or whatever and they would explode which I think is completely awesome. Then we got this shelf of craziness and just with this one screen cap here you can see an umbrella which is more than likely penguins umbrella. Then you have the Riddler's cane with the question mark which is insanity right there and of course at the top you have Bane's mask there are some teeth in a jar which you could reference to the Joker which he has those chattering teeth. I don't really know if I would go that far because they don't really look like the fake teeth. He usually has the fake teeth that explode and stuff like that. But either way, could be a reference 
to the Joker there. Then we have these little hippie hipster glasses over here, which for the longest time I couldn't realize. I was like, those are those are somebody's. I just don't remember. Then it hit me. It's freaking Hugo Strange's glasses, which that was completely awesome when I finally realized it. So yeah, that whole little section just had so many Batman characters on it. It was insane. Now there are some, like it's very dark and there are definitely some other weapons to the left of the cane. There's, I think one of these things kind of looks like a bow and arrow, but I was like, I don't know who would be using a bow and arrow that's a big Batman villain. So if you know who that is, I don't know. And it, it might not even be a bow and arrow, but it does look like something else because of the odd shape. And I feel like there is something else next to what could be a bow and arrow, but it's so dark that I just cannot see what it is. One more thing that is very hard to see on here, but there is a like blue mask that is just sitting on the shelf right above Bane's mask. And uh, I don't know who that could be too. I don't really know anybody that has a mask that's powerful. It's probably just to hold somebody's identity, but I don't know whose mask that would be. Another thing that is very easy to miss is between the Riddler cane and the umbrella, there's actually some leaves there, like some vines. That is for Poison Ivy, which I think is kind of weird because I feel like Poison Ivy kind of just creates that own stuff. Although she's had outfits that have had leaves and stuff on them, but she's able to control everything. So it's like kind of weird that that's in an evidence lockup because I don't know if you would think that stuff would just die. But yeah, so there are some also leaves there for Poison Ivy. Next up, we get introduced to a crazy woman trying to find Mr. Freeze's ice gun, which we do see later on in the episode. But she's saying that her cell broke and she needs to be cold. And that's, of course, when we see Caitlyn. Now, if Caitlyn wasn't in the Arrowverse, if we didn't already know who Killer Frost was, I would automatically be like, that's Killer Frost. But we saw Killer Frost fighting this girl, so definitely not Killer Frost. So the next up, it's either a character known as Ice or a character known as Ice Maiden, or it could just be some random chick that has ice issues. But we did see that the, the lady at the front desk did say that they had a few of those kind of characters. So this could be Ice or Ice Maiden, I don't know. But we'll probably never see this character again, so whatever. Jumping to outside of Arkham, we saw that Arrow, or I should say Barry Allen, got hit in the back of the head by freaking Psycho Pirate with a very candy cane type bat that could very well be a Harley Quinn bat. Or Santa Claus because Batman has went up against him too. Of course, Batwoman shows up like a badass by crushing the van that is about to escape with Psycho Pirate. That is a callback to the Dark Knight Rises, or Dark Knight, not Dark Knight Rises. Sorry, I got my Batman facts wrong. The Dark Knight entrance when Batman crushes the van when those guys are trying to escape the parking lot in that movie. Then we see that she has a remote control Batarang, which is something that you have in the Arkham games if you ever played those. You throw them, they come back to you like boomerangs. It's pretty awesome. Then of course we get probably one of the coolest scenes in the episode, and that is when Oliver Queen tries to shoot his lightning bolt. It knocks a whole bunch of stuff over, and the stuff it knocks over are some little vials that say J. Crane, which if you don't know who Jay Crane is, Jonathan Crane, AKA Scarecrow, and those little vials are his fear toxin. And this scene was awesome. Then of course, Batwoman stops both of them because she's awesome too. And then at the end of that scene or whatever, Barry Allen is all like, can we take a ride in the Batmobile? And she's all like, leave. And uh, you know, just paying homage to the Batmobile because the Batmobile's awesome. Sorry, I'm smiling, I'm smiling a lot because just the nerd in me, the next scene got me like just in the feels because we had Supergirl talking to Batwoman and they were just, you know, they both knew each other's identities because, you know, she's got x-ray vision. Batwoman just knows like everything because she's just like Batman. And they just talked about like, it sucks that we're not able to hang out more because I think we would be the best of friends. And then Batwoman just says World's Finest. And if you don't know what World's Finest is, it's just an old comic book series with Batman and Superman. And it was just them saving the world and stuff. And it was great. Like it was so awesome to get that callback. And now I just want to show with Supergirl and Batwoman. Like that would be, just call it World's Finest. Next freaking crossover, make it just a Supergirl Batwoman crossover. I don't care. Like, uh, just they should be the focal point because World's Finest would be amazing. Or just have them crossover shows or something like that. Like it would just be dope. But it doesn't end there. The Easter eggs, the Easter eggs don't end there, ladies and gentlemen, because when the old Flash, the 90s Flash, shows up from Earth 90, 90s Flash, 90, Earth 90, can you get that one? There was that random Easter egg, but he brings in one of the biggest Easter eggs saying, he looks over at John Diggle and he's all like, hi John, uh, you're not wearing your ring, 
freaking the Green Lantern ring. John is freaking John Stewart on Earth 90. He is a Green Lantern. So hopefully in the future, John Diggle will become the Green Lantern. Two more Easter eggs to go, and the next one up is at the end of the episode when reality changes again. We see that Barry Allen and Oliver Queen are in these like gangster biker suits and they have a newspaper called the Trigger Twins. These are old Batman villains that are two western brothers that uh, just go around robbing places. So yeah, old school Batman villains, the Trigger Twins, show up in the Arrowverse. Of course, lastly, we have the black suit Superman, which I feel like a lot of people know that this is a callback to the comics when he had his black suit or just the animated series if you've ever seen the animated series. So yes, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all the Easter eggs in part two of Elseworlds. Definitely check out, or if I missed anything, I should say, in the comment section down below, let me know if I missed anything and send it to me on Twitter or Instagram or something like that because I was really looking for all the Easter eggs possible in this episode. So if I did miss something, let me know in the comment sections down below. For my thoughts on the episode, I thought it was awesome. It was so great to finally see some just Batman universe stuff in the Arrowverse. Like we've always been tippy toeing around it and every time I've gotten a little bit of a reference, I'm like, huh? But no, this was just so awesome. I think Ruby Rose is gonna kill it as Batwoman. She has that low voice of just like, I, I just felt like she was Batwoman. Thought she was dope. Can't wait to see what they're gonna do in the rest of this episode or the rest of this series, whatever, if she gets her own show. Because I don't know if she's gonna be in the next episode. It didn't look like it. But anyways, that is my thoughts on this. Those are the Easter eggs. Guys, if you haven't seen any of my past videos, definitely check them out. We're going to an all Batman format around here. Also, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for all things Batman. And yeah, guys, that's it. As always, I am your host, Juice Wayne, and uh, I still don't have an outro, but Batman is awesome. See you guys next time.